As I was working on my last week's upload on Wonder Woman 1984, which wasn't too positive, uh, that just is trash. It's just a trash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made me think about the main weaknesses with the DCU so far and how those weaknesses could potentially be fixed in the future. And what I quickly realized was that in order to ever find that fix for the future, we have to go all the way back to the beginning, to the one and only Man of Steel. Now, is Man of Steel the greatest DCU movie made so far? Well, that's a question of just personal opinion and so ultimately doesn't really matter. But what does matter about Man of Steel is that it very much holds the codex key for making the greatest, bestest new DCU movie. That codex key being purpose. See, one of the core issues with the DC film universe so far has always been the case of either or. Either the movies focus mainly on character and end up weak on plot. Just saying, he's what? Charging people's phones? So what? I can charge a phone. Or they focus mainly on plot and end up weak on character. What, we some kind of suicide squad? Or they try to do both, but then ultimately crumble before the finish. I will destroy you! But for whatever reason, maybe because of Chris Nolan, Man of Steel is the anomaly. It successfully handles both plot and character work in a way that properly functions from beginning to end. It might not be the only entry to do that, but it is an entry that does that. Even though it is totally valid to say that in here as well that same division exists, because the first half is mostly character and the second half is mostly plot, the film still manages to blend those halves enough to avoid the sense of vanity that so often plagues big parts of other entries. Even when scenes are lacking in character or plot, those scenes always still carry a clear purpose. And if you've ever seen Back to the Future, you'll know that purpose is what great movies are made of. Which then creates the central question about Man of Steel we need to answer. Where has he hidden it? I don't know. Where is the codex? So, let's look at the ways this film successfully handles both character and plot to create a worthwhile experience functioning from beginning to end that all future franchise entries should learn from. Plus, there's also a third relevant key factor here that has often been a weakness in these DC movies, but I'll have to read this book on psychology first to explain it properly, so we'll get to that lastly. But yeah, here's what the DCEU has to learn from Man of Steel's Codex of Purpose. Firstly, the way Man of Steel succeeds at the character side is by giving our hero Clark one central inner drive that the character scenes always revolve around and push further. The basic gist here is that on Krypton, people are artificially bred to fit these predetermined roles, like leader or soldier or scientist and so on. Whereas Clark is the first natural birth that symbolizes the freedom to find and choose your own role. We have had a child's son, free to forge his own destiny. Heresy! Destroy it! Which essentially then makes Clark's inner drive or character goal very simple. To find out who he is and figure out his place in the universe. And to be clear, this isn't plot because there's no external stakes or urgency or anything like that tied to it. It's just an internal want or struggle that affects only Clark. And the purpose of the plotless character scenes in the first half of the movie is to always explore this one aspect further. For example, after the Krypton prologue, we get this scene of young Clark at school which carries no plot purpose whatsoever. But the purpose it does carry is this. Right, the point here is to visually establish to the audience that, oh yeah, Clark doesn't fit the pre-assigned role of a normal human school kid, which consequently pushes the progress bar of our main character exploration journey one step further. Later on, we have this scene where another kid's mom is freaking out because she thinks Clark saving their school bus from drowning earlier was an the act of God, Jonathan. This was providence. Which then consequently makes us realize that, oh yeah, because Clark doesn't fit the pre-assigned role of a normal human school kid, he might actually get in real trouble. Right, we talked about this. You have, oh Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. Even later, there's, for example, the sequence of Clark learning to fly, which again serves absolutely no purpose in terms of the plot. There's no external challenges or obstacles forcing Clark to learn to fly here or else. It's just this cool thing we seem to have mostly for fun. Hey.
But as before, the reason this sequence is so important is because it serves as the clear next step in our character journey by showing us and Clark not necessarily fully who he is yet, but rather who he can be. In time, you will help them accomplish one. Thus once again pushing that progress bar one step further. And with pretty much every plotless scene in the first half, this is their purpose for existing. To further explore Clark's inner journey of finding his own place in a world in which he has no predetermined fit. Whether it's exploring the question of what he should do. The family's been farming for five generations, Clark. Your family, not mine. Or how he should act. I wanted to hit that kid. You put that one make you feel any better or where he comes from every child was designed to fulfill a predetermined role in our society then once we get to the midpoint where we have explored Clark's inner journey quite far the movie finally shifts focus on the plot which of course as always is the case in this franchise extremely turns it into but the thing you'll notice is that even though Man of Steel does allow the plot to take over, it still doesn't just forget about the character side altogether, but instead now moves to gradually resolve it. Whereas the first half was about Clark searching who he is in the universe, the second half is all about him having to, based on that search, finally once and for all choose who he is. And on multiple occasions, he does. You okay? Clark doesn't view himself as Kryptonian even though he was born on Krypton. He doesn't view himself as human even though he grew up on Earth. He doesn't place himself in any pre-assigned role, but instead, based on what he's learned so far, chooses to form his own. He wants both worlds to prosper, but he will not let one do so at the cost of the other, which is where the emotion of the plot comes from. If you destroy this ship, you destroy Krypton! Krypton had its chance! And that's essentially what the DCEU should keep in mind about the character side going forward. When you have scenes not driven by plot, make sure those scenes always further explore your hero's inner journey of want and struggle. And when you finally ramp up the plot toward the end, don't just forget about that character journey, but instead force your hero to overcome the external plot obstacles by choosing the resolution for it. Secondly, the way Man of Steel succeeds at the plot side is by establishing an external scenario that features all the required components of a functional plot, goal, stakes, and urgency. Even though the main plot here does go through a couple shifts in the process, the central crux of it is that General Zod arrives to Earth in order to, well... Krypton lives again. What happens to Earth? The foundation has to be built on something. Right, Zod is here to upgrade, or I guess to us downgrade, Earth into a new Krypton. And just by that external scenario alone, we already have all the plot components built in. The goal, or what we're doing, is stopping Zod's machines from turning Earth into Krypton. The stakes, or why we have to do it, is all the lives on Earth that we got attached to on our character journey. The urgency, or when it has to be done, is... I mean, it's mostly kinda right now. These three components serve as the external driving force behind the second half of the film, and they are the thing that makes everything we do in the second half serve a clear functional purpose in one form or another. Now, could the plot in execution have been better than just another blue sky beam threatening the whole world? Yes, but at the same time, I'll concede that it does still do the job to earn its purpose of existence, especially when you pair it up with the character journey choices that Clark in the process has to make. Kal-El, I say this. Surrender within 24 hours or watch this world suffer the consequences. What does your gut tell you? But all that said, despite certain other entries' inability to competently succeed even at this, I'd say this should be pretty obvious here. So if you want to know more, you can check out my other videos on the topic. The thing about Man of Steel I do find worth noting though is its ability to weave in plot even to the sections where the plot doesn't yet exist. See, after we get the initial building blocks for the plot in the prologue, it then kind of goes away altogether because there's this 40 minute character section before Zod shows up. And yet, in that plotless character journey driven section, the movie still manages to evoke the exhilarating feeling of plot by creating this self-sufficient situation centered around the same three components. For example, early on there's this character scene where Clark is just casually working on his boat as a fisherman, when suddenly... All civilian boats stand clear. A subsea valve 
has failed and the rig is about to explode. Just like that, a character beat has turned into an external manifestation of GSU. The goal is to free the stuck in place oil rig workers. The stakes are the lives of the workers. The urgency is the fire about to blow the whole place up. Goal, stakes, urgency, plot. Another example, we have a character scene of young Clark sitting in a school bus when... Again, suddenly a plot-driven situation. We have to get the bus out of the water to save the other school kids on board before they all drown. The Arctic scene, we have to get to the Kryptonian ship to prevent it from falling in the wrong hands before the army finds it. And then within that, there's even another plot beat of us having to save Lois, and so on and so on. The point I'm getting at here is that even though the main plot doesn't fully kick in until like halfway in, the movie still creates these external situations to give us the exhilaration of plot. So that even though our focus is mostly on character, it's not only on character, and thus doesn't ever become boring. We have these smaller contained missions fueled by the emotion of the character journey in which we either succeed or fail. And that's what I wish all these DCU movies in the future would do. Even though it is important to give us an internal character journey that makes us feel, we still also need a steady stream of external plot situations to make us exhilarated. Give us things happening, give us real external obstacles that we have to overcome. Give us something that combines the emotion of a small character study and the excitement of a big Hollywood blockbuster. And then finally, the thing that ties both of these aspects together is the villain. So lastly, there's the massively crucial DC aspect of the main villain, which here comes in form of General Zod. Again, whether Zod is the greatest DCU villain we've had so far is up for you to decide, but he's definitely up there among the greatest. You know, already based on the fact that he's not a hulking mass of empty CGI acting like a little kid lost in a store. Where is my mother? There's a lot of good things to say about Zod, and if you look at my villains video for example, you'll find that he fills all the qualities mentioned there. But the reason I'm bringing Zod up here is to highlight him in the context of what we've talked about so far. Because one of the most central key ways that Man of Steel makes work is by organically tying him into both its purposeful character as well as plot work in order to build him into something that every villain should be, formidable and understandable. The formidable angle is born from the plot, the purpose of it being to make Zod a worthy antagonist that we can find dangerous, someone we might actually lose to. And the way this film accomplishes that is simply by taking the main plot and inverting it for his POV. In the Krypton prologue, it becomes very clear that Zod's external objective is to save his dying race, for which he needs the codex that holds the power to artificially breed Kryptonian babies for specific pre-assigned roles. And it's pretty evident how far he's willing to go to accomplish this goal. All it takes is a few key scenes in regards to the plot to clearly establish just how motivated he is. I will find him. I will reclaim what you have taken from us. I will find him, Lara. I will find him! And so when Zod eventually arrives to Earth, his motivation manifests itself through his own inverted plot. He needs to turn Earth into Krypton in order to save his race's existence before the Earth can stop him. And because we know that inverted plot, there's no question about his formidability. If we don't give everything we have to stop him now, he won't be stopped at all. I mean, the motivation angle is so effective that it makes even Zod's right-hand soldier Faora more imposing than the main villains in most of the other entries, simply because she's so relentlessly motivated. You can knock her down all you want, but as long as she's physically able to get back up to fulfill her mission, she will. You will not win. For every human you save, we will kill a million more. The understandable angle, on the other hand, is born from the character side, the purpose here being to make Zod not just an evil movie bad guy, but someone we can clearly perceive as a real person. Which again is done by taking Clark's inner character journey of finding his own place in the universe and inverting it. We've had a child, Zod, free to forge his own destiny. Heresy! 
this planet! Unlike Clark, who was naturally born, Zod was artificially bred into the pre-assigned role of a soldier. And so he genuinely cannot accept Krypton's demise because based on his own inverted inner character belief, his very existence is dependent on there being a Krypton for him to fight for. I exist only to protect Krypton. That is the sole purpose for which I was born. As in, Zod isn't shooting the Earth with a blue sky beam just because it looks cool, but because doing so is the only purpose for which he exists. We don't necessarily agree with what he's doing, but we understand why he's doing it. And that understandability is what makes him a person instead of a caricature. If you destroy this ship, you destroy Krypton! You might think this is obvious, but all you have to do to find an instance where it's not present is look at the latest DC Universe release. I will take your oil. <laughs> and just like with the hero, giving your villain an inverted inner journey also fills that villain and his ultimate clash against the hero with emotion. When Clark and Zod are fighting for the Earth, they're not fighting just for the Earth, but also to decide which of the internal journey answers is correct. To be bred into a predetermined purpose, or to be born to choose your own purpose. And when Clark ultimately reigns supreme and destroys the last hope for there to ever be a Krypton again, it sets up this really personal, emotion-based climax. Without Krypton, Zod no longer has a purpose. And when a soldier has no purpose, the only thing left for them to do is fight until death. These humans you've adopted, I will take them all from you one by one. And I'm gonna stop you. And as a result of Zod's inner character drive being stolen from him, we get this ultimate finale fight that isn't just a big bombastic battle for the Earth, but something much more intimately emotional. One man forcing another to kill his body the same way his soul has already done. AKA the closest the DCEU has ever gotten to the finale of Civil War. Which gives me hope that maybe one day we can get there. And the way to begin is to take Man of Steel's Codex of Purpose and use it. Explore your hero with one inner driving struggle, test your hero with all three external plot components, and then weave all of that together with the villain.